Hey, this is Coach Boydston, and in this screencast, we're going to be talking about viruses, and specifically, we're just going to look at their structure, so what are the parts that make up a virus, as well as just their function in causing disease, so what's their role in causing disease in living things. Now, the key thing about viruses is they are non-living particles, and so these things are not alive. They don't metabolize like us. They can't reproduce on their own. They actually have to infect a living cell to be able to do that. So if you look at this picture, right now I am housed inside of a bacteria cell. You can see the outer portion here of this bacteria cell, and then all of these little things right here, you can see a lot of them here, those are bacteriophages. A bacteriophage is just a virus that attacks bacteria, and they look kind of like a bug and that's why a lot of times when somebody catches a virus we'll say that hey they caught a bug and so let's take a look at the structure though of these things if you look over here on the left um, you can notice our bacteriophage um, this is one obviously we can see this is just a 3d image of one but you notice there's two parts there's DNA and then there's a protein what we would call a protein coat now for all viruses there's gonna be those two things so we're gonna have a genetic material and so in this case you can see that genetic material is right here in the middle and then the protein coat or we also call it a capsid is this thing right here along the outside protecting that DNA so viruses have two parts they have genetic material now that genetic material can be DNA or RNA and then they have a protein coat that protects that DNA or RNA. Uh, it also is called a capsid many times. And so that's the only two parts. Uh, and all viruses have them. So really, really simple, a little different than a cell. And, th and that's why these things are non-living. They don't have the mechanisms that a normal cell would have to uh, produce its own energy and to reproduce. And so they are non-living because of that. Now you'll also know here with this bac bacteria phage, you'll notice that we have these little leg things. They allow it to attach to that bacteria. That way it can actually inject this DNA down into that bacteria and so that gives us the ability to do that if we look at this virus here this is actually different we actually call this an envelope virus it's really similar to like the flu virus what it would look like but you'll notice something different here about these uh, we have these what we call glycoproteins there's one here it's these little purple spikes and we have one here and so these glycoproteins in addition to the other two parts we just talked about so here is the DNA or RNA this red thing here is the protein coat protecting it. So that's the two main parts we talked about. This one actually has an extra envelope and it has these spikes. We actually call those glycoproteins. And what they allow the, the virus to do is to attach to certain cells. So viruses are pretty simple. Just those few parts to it. Uh, they are very simple in their, in their structure. And so that brings up this idea here. Viruses can't just attack any type of cell. They actually have to um, have the glycoproteins that will match up to the receptor proteins of a particular cell. So if you're looking here, this virus with those glycoproteins there in the green is not going to be able to attach to cell B. All right, But it is going to be able to attach to cell A. And so because the glycoproteins match up to the receptor proteins of cell A, this virus here is going to be able to enter that cell, invade that cell, take over the process of that cell, reproduce, and then it's going to kill the cell in the process. And so there's this idea that viruses are specific to the types of cell they can infect. And so the last thing I want to talk about in this short screencast is the role of these viruses. So we just talked about specificity, this idea that viruses can only infect certain types of cells. And so if you're looking here at the, the flu virus, influenza, you can see some real images of this flu virus. This particular type of virus, and you can see those little spikes here on the outside, it actually has the ability to infect this area up here in the top. It also can affect the areas of the lung uh, down here as well as the throat. And so this virus will attach to those areas. Now what's the role of this flu in causing disease? Well, what a virus does is basically disrupts homeostasis. And so when it infects the cells of these areas, we start to get those immune responses, the inflammation that occurs. We know we get running nose, uh, difficulty breathing, cough, um, obviously fever, all those things that would maintain homeostasis in our body, we start to lose those. And so viruses cause disease by disrupting homeostasis. And, and we'll learn in another screencast how they reproduce inside of a host cell but they're basically killing the cells in the process. So you can imagine that's why you don't feel very well. Um, another type of virus um, here that I want to point to is the HIV virus. Um, also, if you look here, really good image, 
you have these uh, glycoproteins, those little spikes we talked about. These proteins, these glycoproteins on this HIV virus actually allow this virus to attach to and attack this cell here. These are actually called T cells. And a T cell is part of our immune system, real important part of our immune system. And so if our T cells are being affected, destroyed, then obviously our immune system is, is being, the homeostasis of our body being an, a good immune system is going to be affected. And so if we can't fight off disease, then just the common cold could kill us if HIV has progressed fur, further enough into AIDS. If you look down here in this bottom picture, just to give you a look at it, this is actually a blood cell here, a red blood cell. And then this image right here, that's actually a T cell. And so it's these T cells in our immune system that HIV is able to attach to, invade, replicate in, and then obviously destroy. And if we, like I said, if our T cell count goes too low and homeostasis is disrupted that much, then even a common cold or flu could kill us because our immune system has been compromised. So um, HIV itself really doesn't kill us. It's going to be um, some type of opportunistic uh, virus that we come in contact with because our immune system's weak that could end up killing us. And so uh, that was just the basic structure. There's just two parts, DNA or RNA surrounded by a protein coat. And then we have obviously the glycoproteins that allow viruses to attach and invade certain types of cells. And then viruses cause disease by disrupting homeostasis. So really, really simple. In the next screencast, we're going to be talking about how a virus actually replicates inside that cell and what that process looks like. So I'm Coach Boyston. Hopefully that was helpful. You guys have a good day.